Hello, Ted. Hello there. Hi. Uh, we're sitting here at, with uh, Ted Chalmers, who is uh, the founder of uh, Summer Hill Entertainment and Tomcat Films. And uh, I understand he has also a new project to share with us here in Berlinale, EFM, first floor. Uh, Market Gorbius and number 137. Yeah, we got it right. So, Good well, nice to see you, Ted. So, tell us uh, you. what's new. Uh, lots of posters here, I see. Yeah, well, we're actually uh, three different companies here, um, all of which are uh, involving me. So, right. uh, my, my company, Summerhill Entertainment, which is uh, encompasses Tomcat Films. So Tomcat Films is more of our production arm and does horror films and right. uh, low budget type of uh, material. And then Summer Hill Entertainment uh, embraces all genres, uh, documentaries, yeah. uh, dramas, romantic comedies, all of that. A few and, years now, you I mean, you, you recently added the documentaries to your lineup uh, a couple of years ago, starting. Yeah, yeah actually, we started the company uh, in 2011 and then we launched Summer Hill in uh, 2015. Mm -hmm. So we started doing theatricals and uh, yeah. being involved in those kinds of things. So um, that's been uh, quite a ride, you know, the last few years. It's been very uh, interesting. And what um, type of docs do you like to uh, select? I mean, all kinds. I mean, yeah. We have political docs. We have, uh, you know, docs about, you know, the adult film industry. You know, I mean, it's, it's just all sorts of different kinds of docs. So. Mm -hmm. um, we're pretty uh, embracing on that. We, we're looking for more. You right. know? Um, we like to have a wider variety. So, um, and then for the uh, domestic side, we uh, signed an output deal with Bayview Entertainment, uh, which is um, a uh, U.S. distribution company. So they have uh, all my content uh, going out in North America. Um, and they're great guys. They really know what they're doing. They had a hit with a film called Skinamarink. And they've been getting films on uh, Shutter and things like that, and so they're getting all of our films out on all of our platforms and everywhere in the U.S. And so that's leading time for me to focus on the foreign and building that up again. Um, as you know, over the last few years, um, the uh, VOD revenue has really grown significantly, mm. and we have been focusing on that. Um, and that's gotten to a, a you know a great spot. But now we want to go back into the foreign side and we'll start. Uh, re-establishing our business with our foreign buyers. Um, I've always had certain key buyers that I've been dealing with, yeah. but um, you know, since COVID and everything, things, a lot of things changed, and so now we're back here reintroducing our whole catalog, our library. We're also representing Baby as well on the international side. So they what, have some what, 1,500 movies. Uh, wow, this would be catalog. What yeah. percentage would be uh, streaming for you for your business? What percentage? Yeah. Oh, um, I mean, you know, it, it, for the last few years, it's been, uh, you know, 80% of the business. It's yeah. been pretty solid. Um, and, you know, but everything's changing and you can't really put all your eggs in one basket like that. So we're always trying to explore different yeah. angles and different varieties. And streaming, of course, is exploding all over the world, not yeah. just in the U.S., but in the U.S., it's the biggest market, so it's making the most money, and so our focus has been there. And now, uh, like I said, I want to put that emphasis into the, the foreign streaming services and, and, yes. and those markets. And a lot of that has to do with localization. Um, so there are a lot of films that we have and a lot of distributors have that are sitting on the shelf for Germany and France because they don't have those. And a lot of the distributors uh, are really wary of you know, committing the kind of money necessary to dub a film into French or yeah, it's, German. Or, it's a or significant or budget. Language. Yeah, it is very expensive, as you know. And so uh, a lot of these films end up not getting picked up because of those uh, investment costs. Yeah. And so my dream has been for many years to find a way to, you know, get into the dubbing side of things. Yeah. So that I can dub myself and uh, be speculative and say, hey, you know, our films are available in German and French, dubbed, not just subtitles. Um, and that has now become a reality with AI. So right. I have invested in a company in France that is a uh, th traditional dubbing company, but they have really unlocked the, uh, the secrets to AI dubbing, and they, are, uh, they have the ability to do it. So I've done an exclusive deal with them. Where, right. um, so you can share the name then, if it's exclusive. The, na the, the, the name is uh, if you can. my company. You know, it's, it's basically going to be Tomcat. 
Uh, All right. Okay. So, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be uh, a, a partnership. Like Tomcat dubbing? <laughs> I think it's going to be called Meow. Meow. That would be fun. With yeah. an exclamation. Yeah, so, that would be fun. Um, but I think that, uh, you know, you heard it here first. So. Okay. Um, and, and you, you know, the, the, uh, the thing about dubbing is that, you know, it's coming. You know, the AI dubbing is coming. And uh, all the buyers that I've talked to here, like, they want my films. They said, oh, these films are great, but the dubbing. And I said, well, yeah. I'll provide the dub. And now I've done deals because they're like, okay, I'll take 10 movies. I'll take 20 movies. You're going to provide the dub. Yes. Easy. Done deal. You yeah. know, um, they obviously want to see the product. They want to make sure that it's quality. And I've assured them it is. And so they will have the uh, ability to reject it if they don't like it. But, you know, they're going to have the ability to review. Uh, I've shown the sample trailer. Uh, that I have, and that's impressed everybody. And that's what basically everybody has gotten gotten them on board. Is that uh, trailers that we've done? So the the process is quite interesting because it is the original actor's voice right. being repurposed into French or German or any other language. Um, ME tracks are not required, so that opens up just a huge landscape of business. Oh yeah, um, lower lo productions. In, so, we're right. talking billions of dollars yeah. of business yeah. that are just that just sitting there and now can be mined through this process. So not only are we doing our films, but we are offering yeah. it to our That's very smart. other distributor clients and yeah. friends. And uh, so you know, people are saying, okay, yeah, we'll take some of your movies. Can you dub some of mine? And it's like, yes, it's yours. You know, in fact, you know, people that we're doing business with get priority, of course. Yeah, you right. know, and and uh, sweetheart pricing, you know. Um, but people are skeptical, you know. Um, but we think that this is the way of, of the future. You know, uh, AI dubbing is is going to be here, and I think that um, you know some of the more traditional dubbing labs are a little concerned, but they have to understand that these films aren't going to be dubbed anyways. So, like, they're not losing any business from us. You know, we're, we're taking films that nobody's going to dub, and we're going to dub them ourselves. Yeah. So it's not stealing any business from them. The business of TV movies, you know, TF1's not going to accept our dubs. Uh, it's, it's, it's definitely, uh, they're safe and sound with their current business model. Yeah. And I'm sure they will incorporate AI dubbing in the future because it makes sense to, but, you know, they don't have to. They, they can still keep doing what they're doing. What we're offering is, you know, an opportunity for smaller companies to exploit their library in a new way. Um, but I have a question for you, Ted. Uh, AI should help you make subtitles as well. Okay. Subtitling is very easy. That's already being done uh, yeah. pretty much by AI, but it's also being done manually by, you know, all sorts of different companies. And it's very inexpensive. Subtitles don't cost that much. Um, you know, we'll actually do subtitles as part of the package if you yeah. want. So that's not. But a it's still a few thousand, no? Uh, no, 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 no. Not, not even. No. I thought so. Yeah. So, well, uh, I come from a major. You know, I was working with Sony like, and Fox. They, they, we didn't. We, we were not charged the, the same price the as The majors, anymore. you know, they pay a lot. Yeah. Uh, they, they probably get a better service for what they're yeah. paying for. But uh, for this lower budget content, um, the. The dubs that we're going to create are going to be fine, yeah. and so will the subtitles if that's what they right. want. So I understand, but it's going to give you like fresh air or boost or to your business and it's a smart way happened. to expand. So yeah. it's great. Um, I also hear, um, I heard many people complaining about the business getting slower or the more difficult, but the streaming is still expanding, and you now you're attacking the foreign market. So. Can we hear something uh, positive and enthusiastic about your future? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, it's only going in one direction with, with streaming. You know, everybody is going to be watching movies this way. So, yeah. you know, um, we've had our ups and downs with it. Um, there is always going to be uh, boom periods and, and, you know, slower periods. But uh, I think it's going to, you know, stabilize to be just a very um, basic revenue source. And, and, you know, as long as we have access to dubs and things like that to be able to, to bring this content to a wider yeah. audience, yeah. I think that there, there's definitely going to be some decent uh, A question that's linked to that, uh, how does that affect your your travel plans attending to other markets? Does, I have not there been to a market for a few years, so yeah. that's a good question. I, I uh, you know, 
Um, you done business from a distance. So. Uh, yeah, it was very easy to do business by email and Zoom and sending uh, agents and people that I work with. Yeah. But uh, this has been a really exhilarating experience for me coming here this year and getting to reconnect face to face with a lot right. of my friends and buyers and. Um, so I'm definitely coming back. I'll be in, uh, in Can Can for sure. AFM, and, uh, looking at AFM in Las Vegas. Tell me, so, tell yeah. me about that. Uh, it's a big change. Uh, I'm very excited about it. I think I think AFM has gotten stale. I think um, that's official. Are, we're getting uh, kind of kind of uh, not very excited about it, and I mean I think they've had some logistics issues uh, with the actual placement of the market, and I, I think this is going to breathe new life. You know, Las Vegas is Las Vegas. I mean it's. It's going to have a lot of appeal just on its own. I think it's going to generate more buyers to come and more sellers. It's going to be uh, just a whole new exciting experience. I'm going to be there. I probably won't be at the booth at all. I'll be at the casino. You know, yeah, like, uh, yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, not really be kidding. careful. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I, I, it's just a, a, I just think it's an exciting uh, environment. And, you know, Nappy used to be there. VSD yeah, used remember, to be there. I went there. And those were great, exciting shows. Yeah. See us still, you know. I, I think there's something to be said for it. So I'm very, very glad they're making that move. Where, which uh, hotel, or I, which I, venue? I, I think it's the Palm. I'm sure, uh, the what? The Palm. The, the Palm Hotel. So an old one. Yeah. Ready to Yeah. Cheap one. <laughs> no, it's a it's a nice hotel and it's got a um, oh. multiplex cinema. In there, oh yeah. So oh well, I haven't it's seen it. That. That's oh. a good idea. If that's in, indeed the one they're choosing. So. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Well, Mel, uh, maybe I'll have to go back there. I personally, what I liked about the, the, the destination is very easy in terms of uh, air flights. Yes. And it's so inexpensive compared to the prices Not in LA. Not during Super Bowl. What? Not during Super Bowl. Of it's course. Very expensive. And is, uh, yeah, or even the Formula One or whatever. But yeah. uh, I'm, uh, well, I'm excited to, to see that. So yeah. we'll probably catch up there. But before that, we'll see, we'll meet in Cannes. And, uh, Yeah, absolutely. My hometown. All right. Well, thank yeah, you so much, so that's Ted. that's the update from Tomcat, Summerhill, thank you. Baby. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ted. Ted Chalmers in Berlinale, Martin Koblius, and uh, it's a wrap. Thank you.